Vicstar123 is one of the UK's most popular online content creators and the Sidemen's fourth most subscribed member after KSI, W2S, and Mini Minter. He also just so happens to be probably the most business oriented member of the group outside of perhaps maybe Zerka. In fact, Vic has done so well for himself over the past few years that he's earned an estimated net worth of around $10 million according to sources like nailbuzz.com. And that's enough to make him one of the few Sidemen that's actually capable of going toe to toe with KSI's bank account. And while Vic may not be quite as famous as JJ, his ability to invest his capital wisely allows him to keep pace. I mean, sure, he is going to drop a Brinks truck or two on some flashy cars like his 2016 Tesla, but for the most part, he invests his money in smarter plays, like a brand new house that may very well be the most incredible mansion out of any of the sidemen. I mean, hell, all of this capital has even afforded him the opportunity to become a part owner of his local esports team, the London Royal Ravens. Now, something tells me that when Vic first started uploading Call of Duty gameplay videos on YouTube, YouTube back in 2010, he'd had no idea that it would end with him making millions of dollars and making his very own esports team. And yet, between YouTube and his widely popular Minecraft servers and a whole host of Sidemen related side hustles, man, I love that Sidemen side hustles. That's exactly what happened. So, if you've ever wondered what makes Vicstar123 one of the most financially successful members of the Sidemen, well, you're about to find out on our newest episode of The Rich Life. Vic is one of the few sidemen who did a lot of his own heavy lifting in terms of earning a large portion of his YouTube audience before he ever joined forces with the sidemen. He started his YouTube channel in April of 2010 at the age of just 14 years old after watching some of his schoolmates use the platform to upload their own gaming streams. What started as a whole host of kill cams for series like Modern Warfare 2 and Black Ops would gradually transform into tutorials that taught his audience how to become better at playing these insanely popular series, and by the end of 2010, Vic had already adopted a once a day upload schedule that put him ahead of the curb of the YouTube algorithm. After about four years of nothing but Call of Duty content, Vic came to the realization that he was extremely dependent upon the developers of the series, turning out sequels and DLC to keep his own content feeling new. So he decided to branch out into other games, in particular Minecraft, whose sandbox-like structure ensured limitless streaming possibilities. By the end of his high school career in 2013, Vic had already earned himself around 400,000 subscribers subscribers on YouTube. More than just that, he had also earned himself a spot at the University College of London in their natural science faculty. But by this point, Vic had become way too invested in his channel to quit. He deferred the start of his education to spend one more year focusing on YouTube full time. And during those 365 days, his sub count would jump to 1.2 million. Now, some of that bump does have to be attributed to his joining of the Sidemen, even though Vic actually came around a little late to the party. After having met most of the individual members at gaming conventions throughout the years prior, Vic was asked to join the group at the end of 2013. A few months later, he moved into the Sidemen house and saw his daily view count explode from around 4 million a month to up around 60 million. Today, Vic's main channel boasts 7.55 million subscribers with more more than 2 billion views all on its very own. The secondary channel that he started in 2012, Vicstar123 HD, is largely dedicated to his Minecraft streams and has 3.2 million subs as well as over a billion views. And we're not even done yet because Vic also has a third channel known as Vicstar Plays that has more than a million subscribers even though he hasn't uploaded it in like two years. Finally, his newest channel, Vicstar Shorts, is easily his smallest channel of all, with just over 137,000 subs, but since he only created it less than a year ago, it is still growing. Well, according to sources like socialblade.com, Vic is clearing a ton at the end of each and every year. Not only does his main channel potentially bring in as much as 225,000 annually, his most recent creation, Vicstar Shorts, can top that at around $281,000. Meanwhile, his second and third channels combine to about $45,000, largely thanks to how irregularly he updated them compared to the other two. Now, I know that's a lot of numbers, but for those of you keeping track, that's more than $500,000 a year that Vic is clearing just from solo YouTube channels. But don't forget that he's also splitting millions each year with the other members of the Sidemen, thanks to their high performing suite of channels. Now, remember how I mentioned that Vic got into Minecraft pretty early on? Well, that was another decision that would pay off in a huge way. Not only because of all the money he made streaming that series on YouTube. Now, I'm not gonna pretend like I know the ins and outs of how servers work, but my general understanding is that these bad boys are controlled by operators who have access to unique commands and can more or less set the stakes as well as the rules for the players using them. Vic started off by operating his own server, and after a few years, he expanded upon that number to open more. 
some of which he co-owns with others. The general way for operators to make money off their Minecraft servers is by donations from their community. But if the words coming out of his own lips are to be believed, well, he's actually to the tune of around $2 million. It's a lot of donations. Now I'm going to assume that's a cumulative total, which is why I didn't list it as his most impressive payday of all. But no matter what way you look at it, that's a pretty epic amount of cash. Outside of his gaming business enterprise, Vic also clears a bundle each and every year with his litany of Sidemen side hustles, like the Sidemen clothing line that, according to a 2018 equity report, is clearing at least 1.7 million pounds or around 2 million US annually. And while merch may be their longest running side hustle, the Sidemen have also put their heads together to recently come up with a whole bunch of new ideas, like their vodka line, which sold out its first wave in 60 seconds at $40 a pop. The boys have also launched their own delivery service to take advantage of the massive growth in that sector during the recent pandemic. Much like with their vodka, this new service is only available in the UK at this point. But considering the boys have recently opened their very first brick and motar storefront, business must be booming and it must be only a matter of time before this business expands elsewhere. I'm unwrapping the burger. Am I, do you want me to eat? Yeah, that's what you're here Woo! for. Damn. The chicken looks fried quite well. The lettuce looks like it was raised uh, free range. Um, <laughs> the mayo is looking nice and creamy and we love good, good cream. Last but not least, the Sidemen have also launched a subscription service known as Side Plus, which offers their rabid fanbase the chance to enjoy exclusive content that they won't find anywhere else. Now, a Side Plus monthly subscription costs around $8 a month, or you can spend $84 annually if you want to save a little bit. The subscriber count hasn't been released to this point in time, but if only a thousand of their millions of fans were paying for this service, that would mean an extra $84,000 for the Sidemen to split. Another way that Vic learned to make money from an early point on in his online career was through sponsorships. And it's not something that he ever took lightly either. Even as far back as 2015, he was telling Game Informer, one thing that has to be maintained is that sometimes companies throw out all sorts of crazy offers, but we have to make sure that the product makes sense. Our audience will see straight through when someone is not genuine. Sometimes Sometimes we just have to say, hey, this isn't what we usually do, so we're not gonna do it. Which means that for the most part, Vic has smartly aligned himself with a host of gaming brands that tie in with what he does. Whether it's Samsung or his recent association with Raka, a computer accessories manufacturer, when you see Vic slinging a product, it's almost always something that he would use himself. So now that we figured out that Vic makes a boatload of cash, let's see exactly how he spends it. The first thing I'm gonna mention is somewhere in between a revenue stream and an expense. I'm talking about Vic's recent acquisition of his local London esports team, the Royal Ravens. Now, obviously Vic must have invested a pretty penny in this team in the first place, and I'm talking millions. But now that he is a co-owner, he's gonna see income from a variety of sources, including revenue shares, tournament winnings, and team-wide partnerships. Now, while I can't tell you exactly how much the team is worth, what I do know is that the company he's now a part of that owns it, Rekt Global, was recently acquired in a deal with $470 million. So there's no question that Vic has found himself having made yet another smart business decision, and one that will continue to provide dividends. Back in 2016, Vic decided to upgrade from his already impressive dream car in Aston Martin to his newly acquired Tesla Model S 90D. Now he did this for a few different reasons, not the least of which was that the Aston Martin wasn't exactly practical. But for the most part, what Vic really wanted was a futuristic high-tech vehicle that was also environmentally friendly. Well, he got his wish with his $110,000 Tesla that now makes him feel like he's riding in his very own roller coaster whenever he puts the pedal to the metal. Better yet, this car has suited him so well that even six years later, he hasn't upgraded from it. On the other hand, something that he most definitely did upgrade was to a brand new house. Over the past few years, a number of the sidemen have moved from living with one another to living in their very own homes. And I don't think anybody can lay claim to having a nicer place than the mansion Vic just spent a fortune on last summer. A few months ago, Vic secured himself a newly constructed house that he's approaching as a blank canvas. And while that might sound like this home isn't much to look at in its early form, well, that simply just isn't the case. Because the moment you step foot inside this thing, you're gonna be blown away. Not only does it include a two-story front foyer with a grand staircase and a killer chandelier, it also includes an open plan living room and kitchen. And then there's the outside that looks like an English garden designed for a more modern century thanks to the incredible pool and all those eye-popping water features. Other amenities include a sleek as hell ensuite bathroom and a home theater that I really wish could be mine, like right now. And while Vic hasn't revealed how much he dropped on this beauty, there's simply no way it didn't cost him millions of pounds. 
Honestly, my best guess is that it would have been on the higher end of the seven figure range. Then again, if any of the sidemen can't afford a life of luxury like this, well, as we've just spent the past 10 minutes finding out, it's definitely Vicstar123. All right, guys, that's gonna bring this latest edition of The Rich Life to an end. Please be sure to let us know what you thought about Vic's loaded bank account in the comment section down below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, ring that bell for notifications before you leave. The only sidemen we have left to cover is Harry, so please keep your eyes peeled for that episode dropping very soon. My name is Clyde Smith, and I'll see you guys in another video.